Hi everyone, Sherry with Granny Sewing Room stopping in to say hi and let you know what I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on finishing up Christmas presents. The bow cozies. And then I put some towels with it. I'm going to put some vinyl. I don't know that I'm going to embroidery. I'll see how I feel when I get the rest of this project done. What I'm going to do is make um, some pot holders to match those because I have fabric left over. So I am going to finish the fabric up with some pot holders and a pot handle holder. Um, I just save my instructions and everything right on my computer. If I print them out, I'll lose them. I'm not an organized person. Wished I was, but I'm not. So I know where they're at on my computer. So I just pull my computer up and kind of read it. And um, right now I'm gonna work on the pot handle. Uh, pot holder and it just goes on the handle of the pot so when they carry it over to the sink to drain off their water uh, on pasta or the potatoes they can have it right on the handle part and then I'm going to make them two pot holders as well to match their cozies and their towel so that will be their Christmas present I will walk you through the pot handle holder the pot handle holder kind of hard to say over and over but uh, I'll walk you through the steps of making that and kind of show you some of the pot holders that I make. The pot holders I make, I think, comes from Five Star. Uh, but I will put a link down in the description uh, where I've got my pattern. I've gotten it uh, over five years ago when I first started doing my embroidery. So uh, I'm sure it's still there, but I don't know what the price is. And... Uh, so I'll, I'll link it to the in the bottom. So has anyone told you how special you are today? If not, let me be the first because you are in God's eyes. So I will get busy getting some of this Christmas done so I can spend a week working on the quilt that I showed you earlier. I had an awesome time yesterday with my great grandbaby making cookies and she's kind of getting to be a pro making cookies with her granny. And as soon as I turned the camera on, it was so funny yesterday. I turned the camera on and got her in the shot and she instantly wanted to say, hi Sherry sewing room and she doesn't get it all out. But she was trying to introduce my sewing room and granny to you guys. So I thought that was pretty funny. So, but I will get busy here and I will talk to you soon. And this is where I got the uh, embroidery in the hoop pot holder and pot handle holder. Kind of hard to say. But this is going to be the handle I'm going to make. And let's see if they show a picture of it. No, those are just the instructions. So I will go get out of there. And I'm going to do it with the binding because I want the binding kind of to match. And I think I'm going to do the six, it gives you several sizes, four inch, five inch, six inch, all the way up to nine inch for a handle for your pot or pan, I'm sh I should say. But uh, I'm going to do the um, six inch. And I am going to move it over to my USB. And let's see, I'm going to do this one. Now, if I was to just click on this, and there's a program in Sew Up Pro that allows you to see all of your designs, see pictures of them. See the little sewing machine right there? That's, that's showing you you have Sew Up Pro. But this is the one of the programs I bought. I think it was like $25, $35, somewhere around there. So I can see every embroidery design, a picture of it. But I'm going to do the cross uh, cross stitch here. But if I was to just click on that, that would pull that right up into So What Pro. So I could adjust anything I wanted. And the only thing I like to adjust is the stitch, the stitch thread. Because I, I don't want it to jump to every stitch. I'm happy with one color. I can see it when I take it off to trim it after the placement lines. and So I am just going to do one stitch. And I think I'm going to start with the red one. So I'm just going to change all of these to, 
to red. Red, red, because I, I can see that. So I just highlight each of them, and then uh, the last one I highlight will be red, so it'll pull up the red, and I click on red. And now I'm just going to go to File, Save As, and save it on my thumb drive where I want it to be saved at. So I will get this done, get my hoop uh, hooped, and I will show you my next pro uh, my next step. I also thought I would share where I save all my designs because I have thousands, thousands, thousands of designs. I bought a ex external hard drive and I store all my designs on the external hard drive. I made my own folders and I just, when I buy them, I save them and I put them in the folder on here. And I made a little case. I had a candle. I used to read the candle. So I made that a cover for the candle. But uh, now I put my hard drive in it to keep it dust free. So that's where all my designs are. So I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so my first step is to hoop cutaway stabilizer. So I will cut a piece of this, you know, and I'm going to make a couple of them so I might as well cut a few pieces out of there and my hoops are horrible because I use 501 spray and I don't clean them after every use so they've got threads and everything on them but they still work so I'll pop this on the machine be right back check my machine to make sure it fits in this hoop it's not telling me usually it'll say change to a larger hoop but if you click the button with a hoop in it next to the house that'll show you what it looks like in the hoop and that how it fits in your hoop so it'll fit in my hoop close it and um, I'm going to I don't cut out the pieces of fabric that it tells you I'm kind of a cheapskate I know I don't have a whole lot of fabric to spare so after I do the placement stitch or yes the placement stitch then I will look to see exactly how big of the fabric I need and the binding and batting and all that so I kind of do it that way Unless I've never sewn the uh, pattern before, then I will do the exact cuts it tells me to do. So I'm going to close it, and I am going to start stitching. So, and I'm going to stop it at the first uh, stitch because that's only the placement. And it's going to stitch out the placement line. I put cutaway fabric or cutaway stabilizer in here because when it does the um, all the cross stitch stitching, that would be so hard to get out with a, a tear away. Now I know I only need fabric to go just over the placement line a little bit so it can stitch down. I don't need it usually as large as they tell you to cut it out and waste that fabric. And since I'm kind of using leftover material for this pot handle holder, that's what I'm going to do. So I will go get my fabric and my binding or my batting and get back to you. I have a lot of scrap of the Inselbright 
So that's why I don't cut out the piece they tell me to the size. And I'm just going to set that down. I use a little, little 505. And then I also have leftover batting. So I'm just going to cut a piece of that out. And long as I have it fitting in there. It's going to stitch down my lines now. And I just want it to stay. I don't go through the tape. All right, so I'm going to hoop that and get that placement line down there. Stitched the placement line or the tack down. I'm sorry, I get those mixed up. Placement's the first stitch. Tack down's the second one. It tacks down your fabric. So now I'm just going to cut all the excess off of here. You want to cut as close to the stitching line as possible to uh, get all the bulk off there. And you always want to cut on a hard surface so this doesn't pop out of the hoop. Ask me how I know. Because I have done that. So I try to get as close as possible. And this is where my chopstick comes in handy. Okay, so now this is what it looks like. It did the cross stitching and now I'm going to put the binding on. So what I do is take the binding right side down and place it right where the bottom edge raw edge is. And I give that just a little spray to help hold it down. Then my chopstick helps as well. So raw edges line up with the bottom stitch line and I put it back on the hoop and it will sew the binding down. Now I cut away some of the fabric so you could see what I'm doing next. This is where I use tape. If you want a little um, hanging knob on your pot holder, pot holder, <laughs> if you want a little hanging thing. So I do use tape for this part to uh, tape it down in place. Okay, the next step is to cut the backing fabric with the lining. So what you do is cut one long strip, double the size, because we are going to fold this in half so we can put the insole bright on the inside of this so when they uh, grab the handle there's protection on both sides so i got this cut i'm going to go iron it in half and cut out a piece of my insole bright or make sure i don't have any scraps here i can uh, put in this piece right here because this is the next step uh, I just, what I do after I fold it, I just spray this lightly with my 501 or 505 spray and then place the Insulbrite in the, in the middle of it 
and fold it down before I put it on my hoop. So I'm going to go get this ironed and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this ironed and folded in half. And I am going to, now if you wanted your backing to be, match this, but I'm kind of wanting it different so it matches my cozies, full cozies. So I'm going to get the crease and just make sure that fits in there, yeah. And I'm going to iron, or spray this just a little bit. Put that up to the crease and fold it back down on itself. So that's what it should look like. I just sandwiched the insole bright in the backing and the lining together. Okay, you line the crease up to the bottom where the placement line is. The placement line. And you do not want to extend that crease past the placement line. And you can use tape here to hold it in place, or you can use a little spray, which I do. Because I sit by my machine and hold her down with my yardstick, or chopstick, sorry. Okay, now it should look like this. So now I'm going to go put it back on my machine and do the next stitch. So this, you do not want that... Uh, crease edge to be stitched down. If it does stitch down, that's how it opens, so you better remove that uh, stitching. So make sure it lines up with the placement line here. So and the next step is to trim around this all now to uh, alleviate the bulk because we don't want all that bulk and I guess it's harder to uh, cut it off once it's all stitched together. Okay, here's what it looks like so far. So now I'm going to put the back lining down on this and then I put it in the hoop and it'll do the final stitch. What I should have done though, the opening's going to be on the side here. I probably should have left the top fabric uh, a little longer on the side just so I can tuck it in when I have to sew it closed. Uh, but I got in there and tried to get all that insole bright off as close as possible to uh, alleviate some of the bulk. So I'm going to get the back piece on this and get it stitched and get it turned and I will show it to you. Now this is the final stitch and then I take it out of the hoop and I will trim around and then I turn it from the side here. So let me do that. And that's the part I should have left the top uh, fabric on the back here a little, little longer so I had some better room to turn it. Cut my corners at, to make them turn nice and crisp. So hopefully I can get it turned and sewn shut. I'll probably use a um, steam -a seam or gonna get as close as I can. I like sewing upstairs just because this natural light, but I love my downstairs. And see what I mean? I should have left the top fabric as long as this. But I didn't, so let's see what I can do. Time for the reveal. 
it is very bulky so take your time when turning it so you don't rip anything with batting and two insul insulite it is thick so fingers crossed I did it right let me grab my chopstick Get that all poked out there. All right, I got them corners pretty good. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to take this piece and get go get some heat and bond on it and press it down the pan handle pot holder just slips on your handle of the pot just like that and i am going to make the pot holders to match and they match their bowl cozies so i'm going to get on making my pot holders and I will show you the end result of the whole project that's done. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you like my videos, will you do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and share my videos? And I want to tell you all a uh, Merry Christmas if I don't get to another video by then. And thanks for watching. Go out and do something creative or stay home and be creative. But whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord and your blessings will always come back to you. God bless everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So this is the full set. I made two pot holders, one pan handle holder, uh, three cozy, bowl cozies, and then try to get some hand towels to match. And I don't know if I'm going to embroidery them or I'm going to put some vinyl on them or just leave them so they can use them without the other items. So that is a Christmas present. Hope you enjoyed my tutorial on making the pot handle holder. If you want to see me make my pot holders, uh, just let me know and I will make a tutorial on that. So, pot holders. And I used it, the one with binding. Okay, I'm going to get on to the next set.